let's just have everybody just uh, unmute your phone and just announce yourself and tell where you're from. And then when we finish that, we'll go and uh, I'm going to mute everybody. Then we're going to get started with our new venture. Okay, so why don't you all do that? Can you do that for me, please? Uh, French Johnson, Contra Hawkins. Anthony Jackson from Wilmington, Delaware. Minister Loretta Jackson, Wilmington, Delaware. Karen Jackson, Pennsylvania. Co Pastor Lisa Johnson, South Coachville Life Center Church. Jessica Labrigans from uh, Texas, uh, Middle East. C.K. Wood from Georgetown, Texas. And I'm from Clark School, Tennessee. Uh, Brian Whitaker from Wilmington, Ohio. Got a lot of people on tonight and a lot of shy folks too. You shy we can hop hop on in there and uh say hello to us. I see my friend from a long time ago, Bill Ransom, Elder Bill Ransom. Wow, Elder Bill Ransom from upstate New York. Buffalo Buffalo outside of Buffalo, New York. Hey, come on and say hello to us, Bill. <laughs> I see Andrew's on. Andrew and uh, Cheryl are on. Praise God. CK's on. Okay. CK, we couldn't we couldn't do this without the help of the Holy Spirit and without your help. So we appreciate you very much. Linda, Linda Guire is on. Jackie Fisher's here. By the way, what you, that uh, ad you see right now on your screen, that's Mary Kay. And that's Jackie Fisher, uh, Jackie Fisher from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Order your Mary Kay um, items from Jackie Fisher. She's uh, she's such a supporter of this ministry and, and a uh, wonderful lady. So we just want you to order your stuff from Jackie Fisher if you can. Now, if you're um, an independent, if you're an independent uh, dealer. Mary Kay, then I am in deep trouble. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, we're going to get started. Aaron, uh, Jackie's on with us. Uh, my precious wife, Jackie, Jackie Carter. And we're going to ask Jackie to lead us in prayer and uh, maybe give us any instructions she may have. Lead us in prayer. Then we're going to get started. Jackie will be monitoring the chat room and uh, taking all of your questions. What I'd like to do, the format I'd like to use in this new venture as we go through the Bible in the next, uh, um, for as long as God will have us do this, uh, we're going to go through the Bible. We're going to take it uh, book by book. And um, I like to use this format. I'll do, do the teaching that the Lord has given to me or whenever Dr. Gene Bratton is teaching or uh, someone else uh, is teaching, and then at 8 o'clock, at exactly 8 o'clock p.m., we will stop the teaching and go into question and answer. So we give ourselves a, a half-hour window for questions and answers. Uh, in the meantime, if there's anything that has to be attended to, if you put it in the chat window, uh, my precious wife Jackie will pick this up and uh, share it with me. Okay, Jackie, uh, before you lead us in prayer, if you see anything that needs to be attended to, please bring that to my attention. Jane Bryson. Mm -hmm. um, no, just trying to help Lynn get some volume she can see, but she's not able to hear, so we'll be working on that. Okay. Um, other than that, I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, Okay, some are on, on, on their computers, some are on, on their cell phones. Um, so, um, okay, Jackie, you take over. 
Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been excited about uh, today and in great anticipation. So let us not delay any further. And if you will, take a moment and um, let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you loved us enough to wake us up this morning and allow us to get to this point in our day. Father God, we thank you for this new and exciting venture that we're about to enter into, going through your word, beginning with Genesis and going through the Bible. Father God, we ask that you give us patience, that you give us wisdom, that you grant us, Father God, insight into your word so that it enables us to be better children of you. And it helps us, Father God, to reach someone else. So we ask that you bless each and every individual who is on our Bible study tonight and bless their households, Father God. Whatever it is that they're in need of, we ask that you grant it if it is your will. We ask now, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to be with us and among us as well as in us, Father God, as we begin our first lesson for the year. Thank you for all of your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie. You're so precious, and uh, what a mighty help me God has given uh, me in you, and we appreciate that. Okay, hey, ladies and gentlemen, um, Back to Basics Ministry, Back to Basics uh, Ministries presents the Bible study, the online Bible study we're going to start in Genesis, and um, many of you have received your lesson assignments. Um, if not, email me or, or um, yeah, contact me, either email or text message or by phone call, starting tomorrow, not tonight, tomorrow. I will send you out the assignments, how we're going to go through the Bible. Um, we will take it in 12-week segments. Um, the first 12 weeks will be the Pentateuch, the books of, of the, the Old Testament, um, books of law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. We will complete those five books in 12 weeks. Uh, we will not be going word for word in the Bible. That's for you to read. You do the reading. For example, for this week, our reading assignment is chapters 1 through 11 in Genesis. Next week, your assignment is to read chapters 12 through 21. Then uh, we go two more weeks in Genesis, then two weeks in Exodus, one week in Leviticus, and um, the rest in Numbers and Deuteronomy. So we will, we're going to divide the Bible into 12-week segments. That's also so that those who are taking this Bible study for credit can... Um, earn their semester credits uh, in 12 weeks. We have in our School of Ministry um, courses in which we offer three credits per semester. A semester lasts 12 weeks. And you can, have, you, can, you can earn a degree. You can earn your degree by taking five semesters either with the Bible study or five semesters with the um, independent study courses that are available in the, in, the, in the School of Ministry, or you can choose to earn a certificate by going through the whole Bible study with us and getting the certificate at the end, or you can do like several others are doing, just let's go through the Bible for fun, for learning, for edification, and for fun. You make your choice. You make your decision as we go along. If you decide you'd like to take the course for credit, then we will add you to our School of Ministry. By the way, the Back to Basic School of Ministry is fully accredited, fully accredited. We're only eight years old, but we are fully accredited as of July of this year, and that's awesome. That's really a blessing. And so we thank God. And so we take um, the first 12 weeks will be the Pentateuch, or the books of the law, or the Torah. After that, we take 12 weeks in the books of history, uh, starting with Joshua and the books of history. 
After that, we take 12 weeks studying the books of poetry, uh, Job, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. After that, we take 12 weeks with the uh, major prophets. Then we take 12 weeks with the minor prophets. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take 12 weeks studying the intertestamental period so that we can learn what happened between the time of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Then we take 12 weeks with the life of Jesus. Then 12 weeks with the book of Acts. Then 12 weeks with the, the um, Pauline epistles. Then 12 weeks with the general epistles. And then 12 weeks with the book of Revelation. By that time, uh, two years will have passed and we will complete the Bible. And then we're going to go through it again with a different perspective. So the whole objective is to share with people what the Lord has given us that uh, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and, and for lack of knowledge of him. And we're seeing this all over the nation and all over the world. And I want to thank CK. Uh, CK is on with us. She's from down in Texas. And when we announced back in April that we're going to go with a national Bible study, CK said, oh, no, oh, no, let's make it international. And so many of you are listening in by way of the recording in several nations. People are listening. Uh, they will get the recording the next day. For example, our friends in Kenya are right now it's 7.16 p.m. here in the United States on the eastern coast. Uh, it's mm, 3.16 a.m. in Kenya. So I don't expect them to be up listening online live, but they will get the recording. And nations in Asia, nations in Europe, according to their time zone, they will benefit from, they will benefit from the um, recordings. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm excited about teaching. I love teaching the Word of God. I've been teaching the Word of God for a long time, um, just celebrating 50 years. On July 20th of this year, I celebrated 50 years of being saved, 50 years. And I thank God for blessing me 50 years and then for calling me into the ministry in 1974. And so... I'm going to have to mute everybody. Um, okay. We, we want you to mute your phone, star six, star six, if you don't know how to mute your phone, star six, and six, star and six, so that you will not uh, cause any disruptions or any interference for people who are taking uh, who are watching the recordings. Okay. Muted. Okay. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start in right in chapter 1, and, and um, I, I expect tonight to go through Genesis 1 through 11. And, and give you a good overview of this book of Genesis. And Jackie, somebody needs to be muted. Uh, I think I got it. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, our love for the Lord, our being believers, it all starts here. It all starts here. Uh, by the way, we will not argue uh, in, Bible, in this Bible study, I am not going to present it as people do in Sunday school class. Have somebody read a verse and then ask eight or nine people, what's your take on this verse? Nope, we're not going this way. We're going to look at all scriptures given of one in interpretation. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit to give us the interpretation. Now, that does not mean you can't ask questions. At 8 o'clock, we will open the floor for questions. And uh, but no arguments. I will no arguments, please. We're not going to waste God's time or yours arguing and trying to impress someone with how intelligent we are. We are all intelligent, but we're going to honor God with this time. 
You know, there are people dying today in parts of the world because they want to hear the Word of God. They want to read the Word of God. There are people in some countries, their heads are being cut off if they own Bibles. Uh, we're looking at China, India, and, and other nations where people are suppressed and being oppressed. And so we want, to, we want to honor God. We want to honor those people who are under oppression also. And so we want, we want to really go through the Bible. And, uh, and, and you will grow as you hear the word. Even as I teach, I grow. As I hear the word of God, when the word of God comes out of our mouths, we grow. The word of God becomes a powerful force. And so we are trusting that as we teach, the Holy Spirit is guiding us. We believe everything in the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe everything in this Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, I believe it. I believe it. I may not understand it all, and, 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 but I believe it. The Scripture says all of Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And so when we start with the very first verse of Genesis, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. When people believe that, that is a life-changing situation. It's life-changing. Uh, you may be on live with us tonight. You may be listening to the uh, recording and you have never taken the time out to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Ladies and gentlemen, salvation begins with the first verse of the Bible. Salvation begins. God's plan for mankind begins with the first verse of the Bible. And so uh, when we read, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, you know, that just blows away uh, the... the, uh, the uh, the uh, scientists, we just blow them out of the water. You know, so many people have been messed up in this world because they went to school. Now, I know that sounds funny. That sounds goofy. sounds ridiculous. But many people's lives have been messed up because they went to school. And so we went to school. They started us off in kindergarten, in first grade, talking about uh, uh, man evolving from the monkey or from the ape. And, 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 and scientists have been for thousands of years trying to prove that man evolved from the ape. It did not happen, ladies and gentlemen. It did not happen. It uh, did not happen uh, because the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And as we look through Genesis, as we go through these chapters, these early chapters, you'll see his plan for creation how he created the heaven and the earth, how he created the firmament, how he created the oceans, how he created mankind, how he caused the trees to grow, and, 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 and all of this. God did this. We did not evolve, ladies and gentlemen. And so one of the big contentions in this world is the fact that there is a force called Satan, and you're not going to see Satan early in Genesis. You're not going to see him uh, uh, right away. But um, you've got to, in order to understand the Bible, we've got to put together what God says in Genesis. We've got to take a look at what Isaiah says. We've got to take a look at what Ezekiel says. And then we've got to take a look at the book of Revolution. Revolution. Revelation. The book, yeah, it was a revolution. The book of Revelation, in order to get this whole idea of who Satan is, and how Satan corrupted God's creation. But we will get there, and you're going to be blessed. Uh, uh, the church is going to be edified, and God is going to be glorified because of what uh, we learn. Yes, C.K., we will uh, record the questions and the answers because some of the questions will be questions that people may not be able to get online with, with, their, with their questions, but we will record them. And some questions will be similar, uh, and we will give record the answers. Verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In the beginning there was nothing, just darkness, ladies and gentlemen. It was darkness. It was darkness. 
and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And in this, we see in creation, we see the, the triune God, meaning God in three persons. Not three gods, but God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We see Jesus along with God the Holy Spirit and God the Father in the creation. And then John in his gospel, John talks about how Jesus was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we want to invite the world to open their hearts to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. There are some religions, they do not even honor the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you have a church? How can you have, have a religion and you kick the Holy Spirit out? Well, what are you going to do about verse 2? Verse 2 says, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, moved upon all the face of the waters, on all the darkness, and God created. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the, the scenario was this. God spoke, and the Holy Spirit, and, and Jesus created. God spoke, and, and the Holy Spirit responded, and Jesus create, uh, responded. John lets us know in the preamble, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the beginning of his, his book, and uh, all things were made by Jesus. And without him, there was nothing made that was made. And so this Bible is going to open you up, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be uh, so excited about coming online on Wednesdays. And what you learn, I pray that you will teach others. I pray that God will raise up a cadre, an army of teachers who will move throughout the earth and teach the word of God so that the whole world can be saved. Listen to this, verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And so God didn't have to put on his construction helmet. He didn't have to get out his tape measure. God did not have to get out his, uh, open his lunchbox and sit down and take a little rest and nibble on his sandwich. And no, it, it wasn't that kind of creation or construction. God spoke. Ladies and gentlemen, we serve a God who speaks and his word, and his word, things come into existence. And ladies and gentlemen, God has given us, the believers, the followers of Jesus Christ, the same creative ability. We can speak. We can speak in things that uh, uh, are not, can come into existence. The Lord Jesus even told us that we speak those things that are not as though they are. And so we're going to grow in faith as we travel in this venture. And then... Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, 4, uh, God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. There was darkness, and God spoke and said, let there be light, and all of a sudden, boom, biff, bam, boom, light came on the scene, and darkness had to give up. Darkness had to give up one half of its entire kingdom and realm so that light could come on the earth. So now we have 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. And then verse 6, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. I want to encourage you as you study the Bible uh, to get a good dictionary a good dictionary so that you can write down the terms, the words that you don't understand. As you study the Bible, write down, what is a firmament? And we learn in this scripture that the firmament means heaven. The firmament is heaven. And there are words that you're going to see that you don't know, and I don't know, but write them down, get a dictionary, and, and write down the uh, uh, definitions of these terms. Verse 7, God made the firmament, divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, heaven. You see heaven in verse 8. Verse 9, God said, let the waters under the earth be gathered together unto one place. And so dry land appeared. Verse 10, God called the dry land earth. 
Verse 11, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And so God made it so that uh, grass and trees could grow and, and fruit-bearing trees and trees that, trees that can re reproduce themselves uh, with their seed. And verse 14, uh, on the fourth day, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of, of the heaven. God flung those stars in the sky as lights. And then we see where he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what God did, and he did it in one day. Now the, the evolutionists and the scientists try to make you think it took millions of years for all this to come about. Ladies and gentlemen, read the Bible and believe it. No, we don't have every explanation. We don't have every answer. But by faith, I believe these things were done. And God made two great lights, verse 16, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also and set them in the firmament in the heaven. Okay, and then verse 20, God uh, said, uh, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl. So we get fish and we get birds. And then God created great whales, uh, Verse 21, and living creatures. Verse 22, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, did, did, was this day the same length of the days we have now? Because there are many people who say, well, a day was a thousand years, or a day was 10,000 years. I believe a day was a day. A day a day today is 24 hours. I believe God did this in 24 hours. Well, I contend with you. Well, no, no, we're not here to contend. I believe a day is a day. The Bible says he did this in a day, and, and I believe that. I don't believe this was thousands of years of uh, evolutionary uh, uh, evolvements. I believe God did this. He spoke his word. And when he spoke his word, things came into existence. And I know you're getting a lot of questions together, so just have a little notebook, write your questions down. And during the question period, if you can't get all your answers, email me, and I'll, I'll attend to those uh, uh, and make sure you get the answers that God will give us for you. Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, verse 27. And in the image of, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So this is, this is a generality, ladies and gentlemen. It's, the, it's, it's creation in general, okay? In the next chapter, you'll see the specific creation, how God specifically created Adam and, and then made Eve out of Adam's rib, okay? So Genesis chapter 1 gives us an overview, and God uh, said, let us make man in our image, and God created man, male and female. But in the next chapter, we see how he specifically uh, created Adam and Eve. And so, verse 29, God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be meat. And it goes down, chapter 1 closes out, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God labored for six days and, 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 and created this wonderful universe in six days with the stars, the sun, the moon, the planets, the fish, the trees, the birds, and all this in six days. To understand the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, it takes faith. 
faith. We're going to get to a place later on in our study where we're going to look at who wrote the Bible. And we're going to look at the, 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 the struggle that people have had learning the Bible, the struggle to translate the Bible. That we're going to look at many people who are put to death trying to translate the Bible from the, the uh, Hebrew or the Greek or the Latin into the vernacular languages. This is a mighty book. This is the book that has changed lives uh, historically and is still changing lives. And it all hinges on our having faith in the Word of God, that, that everything in this book from Genesis to Revelation is given by inspiration of God. And this word inspiration is a word you need to put in your, voca your vocabulary. Inspiration means God breathed. He breathed his word into 40 different authors over a period of 1,600 years. This entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is how God breathed into the hearts of 40 different men over a period of 1,600 years and what he spoke to Moses, what he spoke to Joshua, what he spoke to Ezra, what he spoke to a Paul, what he spoke to Peter, what he spoke to other writers, <clears throat> and how they wrote what God spoke to them. And the Holy Spirit moved upon their hearts. And so when uh, we, the Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, it means inspiration means the Holy Spirit breathed upon people, and they began writing. They didn't write what they wanted to write. They wrote what God directed them to write. That is why this book can never be defeated. You can burn it, but you can't defeat it. This book is the word of God. It's the living word of God. It's the thoughts of God, the mind of God, the will of God put into written form. God spoke it to people, and they wrote it. And this is the book that changes people's lives and will change lives Today will change lives tomorrow and will change lives until Jesus comes back. Chapter 2, we get into the specifics of creation. Okay, verse 2, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. God is cool, man. God is cool. I'm saying, hey, CK, God is cool. He worked hard for six days. And then after the sixth day after he made man, uh, he rested. He rested. And, and um, then it's important that you know that God rested because we're looking at the Sabbath. That day of rest is called the Sabbath. And you and I ought to have a day of rest. You and I ought to have a day of rest. You may say, well, but I've got to work every day. I work seven days a week. Uh, you've got to take some time off where you rest and you give honor to God. Give honor to God. No work and honor to God. Uh, I'm still learning how to do this, as Jackie Carter will, will tell you, uh, to give honor to God. To so take some time out and, and worship God and rest. And let your body replenish itself. Let your mind replenish itself. Let your spirit uh, 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 be filled with the Holy Spirit. God heals that way. He blesses and he, he reproduces that way. Okay, so in chapter 2, you see the plants of the field, uh, every herb of the field before it grew, grew, how God caused it to rain upon the earth, uh, how God, verse 7, uh, formed man out of the dust of the earth. You may say, well, how can God make man out of the dust of the earth? And, and there are some people, they're so proud. I'm not dust. I'm not made out of dust. Yes, you are. You're, you were made out of dust. God created Adam out of the dust of the earth. He just took dust and formed man and blew his breath in man. And man became a, a living being with internal organs and blood and capillaries and, and all this sort of thing, muscles. And, 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 and guess what? We were formed out of dust and we will return to the dust. We will return to the dust. Um, that's the way God uh, created us. Okay, and so 
um, you get a, a look at the uh, Garden of Eden. You get an idea physically where it was geographically. Chapter 2, verse 11, the name of the first river was Pison. And it talks about the gold within that land. Uh, the name of another river was Hideko. And then there, there's a river called the Euphrates. And we know that the Euphrates River is right in the heart of Babylon, right in er Iraq, Baghdad. The Euphrates River runs through there. And so this is real, ladies and gentlemen. This is no, the Bible is not fictitious. It's not some book that some man made. And, and, and God gave us his history, his story, and all of this scripture, this whole thing, this whole book, this whole book, ladies and gentlemen, is all about how God created everything for a purpose. He created this whole earth so that his son Jesus could come and rule on the earth and, and have a bride to co-rule with him. And so as you look at the big story, you look at God creating a place for uh, Jesus to come and live and to rescue sinful mankind, and then to sanctify mankind, set mankind apart, and then provide a, a, a way for mankind to have eternal life. And, and this whole thing is wrapped up in these 66 books of the Bible. By the way, when we look at 66 books of the Bible, we're looking at one book that is 66 parts. And each of the parts of the the Bible are called books, and um, I hope you'll learn how to uh, memorize your books of the Bible in order. I've been teaching this for about 30, 40 years that you can uh, uh, fire the M66, as we call it, get all 66 books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Song, Solomon, Ecclesiastes, uh, 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 Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. That's the Old Testament. And we can just blow right through the 27 books of the New Testament. This comes with experience and this comes with study. And it also helps that when you're in church, and the pastor says, I'm going to preach from the book of Habakkuk. You don't have to turn to the table of contents and find out, oh, uh, where's Habakkuk? Or ask your neighbor, where's Habakkuk? No, you know, you know where Habakkuk is. It's, a, it's one of the minor prophets, okay? And you know where Nahum is. You know where uh, uh, Obadiah is. You learn this by practice. Okay, now... Genesis chapter 2, you know, uh, there's uh, one gonna, who's going to come on the, scene, on the scene. His name is Satan. He, he, he hates God. He hates you. And he hated this creation. And you don't get his whole story, but uh, God created him. And then he tried to take over. And when we put together uh, parts of Genesis and parts of Isaiah, parts of Ezekiel, parts of the a book of Revelation, we get the story of, of Satan and, and, and why he does what he does and, and, and how he messed up. And we're going to take a look at him later on in Scripture. But he messed up. He had it made. He was an angel, an archangel, and he had access to the throne of God. Nobody approached God unless they came by uh, 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 Luc uh, Lucifer. But he messed up. He got puffed up in pride. And so... Be careful of pride, ladies and gentlemen. Pride can lead to destruction. Pride can lead to destruction. And so when, when uh, Lucifer was Satan, who had been kicked out, where is he? Where is he? When, when we're studying Genesis uh, 1 and 2, uh, uh, you don't see him come on the scene until the second, uh, until the second chapter, third chapter. He has been, Satan has been kicked out of heaven, and some time had passed between the time that God created Adam and the time uh, Satan comes and talks to Adam. Uh, 
There, there, there had been a war in heaven. I don't know exactly when it took place, but it took place after the creation. And Satan tried to rebel against God as Lucifer. And, and God called the archangels and put Satan in his place and defeated him. And then kicked him out of heaven and confined him to two places. One, the underground, and two, the, the, the second atmosphere. That means Satan uh, rules in the atmosphere above the earth. But the third atmosphere or the third heaven is where God rules. So up in that second atmosphere, we learn this from Scripture, Satan uh, specializes in trying to block our prayers and, and, and trying to intimidate mankind, uh, whispering it, evil in people's ears. And then he works also from his headquarters in the underground. We learn this in Scripture. We learn how uh, uh, Jesus... Uh, when he, when he was crucified, he died, and he went into the underworld. Jesus went into the, the underworld. Jesus, he's bad. He's a bad man. He's a bad, I mean, when I say bad, he's good. He's so powerful. He went right into Satan's kingdom and stripped Satan of all of his power and uh, destroyed all his power and, 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 and then paraded Satan and the defeated demons the fallen angels, he paraded them before God, and he let them know, God, these are the, the, the fallen angels who rebelled against you and have corrupted mankind, have caused all this havoc, and here they're stripped. I'm, I'm going to march them before you. They are a defeated foe. And ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you, as the Bible reminds me, Satan is still defeated. He is still defeated. He may be kicking up and... Uh, uh, there's a reason why God is allowing Satan to kick up. But Satan is a loser. He's a liar. Jesus Christ is Lord. And all of this destruction and all the catastrophes going on around us, these are just evidences of the end times, the last times. Okay. Um, so Adam had dominion. God planted him in the Garden of Eden. Adam had dominion over all of the earth. Adam had a computer brain. He named everything. And he could remember what he named them. And uh, Adam was not like us. Uh, sometimes we forget where we put our glasses. I, I've asked Jackie sometimes, Jackie, have you seen my glasses? Yes, they're on your head. <laughs> but Adam had a computer brain. He named everything. And, and then God saw that Adam uh, could not complete God's will. And I've heard people say Adam, God saw that Adam was lonely. Yes, he was lonely, but Adam had a, God had a plan for Adam. God's plan was for Adam to actually replenish the earth with mankind. And he couldn't do that by himself. And so God made out of Adam, took a rib out of Adam and created Eve. And the word Eve means mother of all living things. Uh, um, he, he, and God called her a woman, a womb man, W-O-M-B, a man who had a womb, a woman, a womb man. And, and uh, Eve uh, became the mother of all mankind. And so God gave them dominion, but then Satan went to work. And you read this in chapter 3. And Satan deceived the woman. Your homework assignment and... Um, uh, please contact me if you hadn't, haven't gotten your homework assignments and your reading assignments. One of your questions was um, about how uh, Satan deceived Eve. Satan twisted the word of God. He always twists the word of God. He tries to make you think that God's holding something out on you. And so he deceived Eve, and Eve, uh, in turn, deceived her husband. Adam was right there in the garden, ladies and gentlemen. He had authority over that snake. He heard the conversation between Eve and 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 and, uh, and and Satan, and Adam let it go. And Adam gave up his spiritual authority and his dominion on the earth. And as a result, when Adam uh, 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 sinned, first of all, Eve took a bite of the fruit. Then she gave a piece. Uh, to her husband, and he ate. And then uh, God asked them, where were they? They were hiding from him, hiding in, in the woods. Uh, they had 
put uh, 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 leaves around their bodies. So, and Adam said, oh, we're naked. We, we, we heard your, vo your voice and we were scared. And God said, oh, well, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the fruit? And then Adam started doing what uh, a lot of people are doing all over this nation. He started pointing the finger, blaming, blaming uh, 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 one another. You could say Adam is the, uh, was the founder of the Republican or the Democratic Party, one of the two, or maybe both of them. They began finger pointing. He said, uh, God, first he pointed the finger at God, God, and that woman you gave me. And then he pointed the finger to the woman. That woman you gave me. Uh, yes, we ate the fruit because that woman you gave me. That woman you gave me. And so sin entered the world. Sin entered the world. The world was without sin, ladies and gentlemen. And Adam sinned and sin entered into to the world. And sin entered into the very nature of mankind. That is why... Uh, Jesus in John 3.16 said to uh, Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. Everyone, everyone, everyone who's come upon this earth must be born again if they're going to live eternally with God. Why? Because the very nature of man has been corrupted by uh, Satan, because Satan enticed the man and woman to sin against God. We need to know that. No matter how beautiful a person is, no matter how sweet that person acts, uh, they are still, people are still sinners. We're all born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and need salvation. Everyone needs salvation. And the only way people can get saved, ladies and gentlemen, is by hearing the word of God and repenting of their sins and receiving Jesus as Lord. And the scripture says, how can they, uh, how can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? So make sure, make sure you're sitting under a preacher who was sent by God, not some charlatan, not some, not some, somebody who's going to uh, make up his own or her own credentials. Make sure God sends them. And so uh, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 15 in Genesis, very important. You might want to circle that verse or circle the 15 because God promised, God promised that he would destroy, he would destroy Satan. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy, he thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And that's also, that's also a, a shadow of Jesus on the cross, ladies and gentlemen. When Jesus hung on the cross to die for all mankind, he fulfilled the promise that God made in Genesis 3.15. So this entire Bible, ladies and gentlemen, is God's story of how he provided mankind because God loves mankind and, 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 and he he produced mankind to rule on the earth and to co-rule the earth with his son, Jesus Christ. Later on, God's going to bring Jesus into the world, and Jesus uh, it, it, uh, will be crucified. He will die for the sins of all mankind. And then um, Jesus' death on the cross will make it a way, the way possible to bring mankind from under the curse of sin. And so every one of us who is born again, we're not under the curse. We're going, we're going to live eternally with God. And God does not want anyone to turn back. There's, you cannot turn back. If you turn back, having re received Jesus and turning back, there's no salvation. So well, what do you mean, Pastor Carter? Once saved, always saved, right? Nope, nope, nope. I don't preach it. I don't teach it because it's not in the Bible. The Bible warns us against turning back. The Bible warns us against uh, 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 stopping on the journey. The Bible warns us against coming short of the finish line. And so chapters 4 and 5, I told you we're going to finish 11 chapters. We're going to do it in the next six minutes. <laughs> in the next six minutes, uh, Cain and Abel. 
Adam and Eve had, they were kicked out of the garden. They had their first child, Cain. Then the second child, Abel. Cain was a woodsman. Abel was a, a farmer. Cain killed his brother out of jealousy because God honored Abel's offering rather than Cain. Now, Cain could have give, given God a good offering, but Cain chose to give a second-class offering. And so Cain murdered his brother. And then Cain arrogantly, and as a lot of people are arrogantly, arrogantly get in God's face today, and God says, uh, where is your brother? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? Ladies and gentlemen, you are your brother's keeper. You are your brother's keeper. So chapter 4 talks about um, what happened to Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain was banished. Um, Cain went off and married and, and had children. And we see uh, those children. And then we come down to Lamech and um, and um, then we come down to others, Enoch. And then chapter 5, we look at the whole generations. Now, when you look, when you look at starting with Genesis chapter 5, you're going to run to a series, into a series of chapters throughout the Bible where you have genealogies. Genealogies. The word genealogy tells her who came from whom. Okay? A lot of people don't read these words because they say the Bible is, these words are too difficult. Well, you have to learn how to break them down into syllables, into syllables. For example, uh, chapter 5, Genesis 5, 13. And Canaan lived after he begat Mahalaliel, Mahalaliel, 840 years and beget sons and daughters. You'll say, well, who in the world is Mahalaliel? Okay, and then you get down into um Verse 22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. So you see a lot of names, and they get even more difficult in other parts of the scripture. But read those genealogies so that you can discover who fathered whom, or who was the grandfather of whom. You will even find in a certain genealogy in the, in the Old Testament in Genesis where Job came from. A lot of people argue, well, Job, nobody knows where he came from. Yes, 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 where Job came from. It's, speci it's specific in a genealogy, okay? And so chapter 6, chapter 6, there's um, the story of the flood. There were giants in the land, and uh, the giants were actually, actually real giants, ladies and gentlemen, 10, 15 feet tall, ugly-looking creatures. And they came into existence because the Bible says, the Bible teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, verse 2 of chapter 6, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The fallen angels, the angels that had fallen from heaven with Lucifer, Satan's fallen angels, they, had, they saw that the Daughters of men were beautiful, and they became husbands. They took these daughters as their own wives. It's in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. If you want more on this, get a copy of my book, The Giants Are Back. I give a history of the giants in the Old Testament and the giants in the New Testament, why giants exist, and how you can recognize them today. And it's all about God's plan to preserve his seed, as he promised in Genesis in Genesis 3.15, but Satan's plan was to destroy that seed. In this book, the Giants of Act, you see many incidents in which Satan tried to destroy people, even masses of people, so that he could prevent God's plan from taking place. And he's still doing the same today. Okay, and then we see the flood. We see the flood. The world... Genesis chapter 6 says the world was so, lets us know that the world was so corrupt with sin. The giants had taken over. I mean, these ungodly people who had married women and produced these monsters. And these were the people that Satan tried to appropriate to uh, populate the world with so that he could block the seed of God from entering into the world. 
keep in mind, these giants, these, these horrible people, these horrible experiences, and these horrible people living in the Canaan land, before Joshua took the children of Israel into the Canaan land, these horrible people lived because Satan planted them there and had them repopulate and repopulate to prevent the seed of God from entering into the world. Satan did all he could to try to block Jesus. And the purpose of the flood was that God recognized that the world was overwhelmed with ungodly people. And God decided to destroy them all. He only found eight righteous people. And that was Noah and Noah's wife and Noah's three sons and Noah's three sons' wives. And so when you look at chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8 of Genesis, we're looking at how God destroyed the world through a flood and started the world population over again with Noah, his wife, and Noah's three sons, and the three sons' wives. And chapter 9, God blessed, blessed Noah and then hung the rainbow in the sky and made a promise, made a promise. And every time you see a rainbow, remember, God made a promise to, to Noah. I will never again destroy the, the world by flood. Oh, yes, there's going to be fire, fire next time. But God will not destroy the world by flood. So uh, it may rain, and then when we're praying for the people on the, uh, the Florida and the Georgia and the South Carolina, North Carolina coast, and praying for the people from uh, the Bahamas and the islands, uh, the the floods are terrible, but the floods will not destroy mankind. And so, um, we look at the, the genealogy of Noah. Noah had three sons: Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And we we want to highlight Shem, S H E M, Shem, because Jesus Christ came out of the lineage of Shem. Okay. Um, Chapter 10, chapter 10, you can get a good practice in reading the genealogies and trying to read some of these words, like verse 2, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, Tubal and Meshach, Meshach, and Tiras. Verse 3, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarmah, and you'll see all these names. Look at verse 7, and the sons of Cush, Seba and Havilah and Sapta and Rehomah and Septikah and the sons of Rehomah, Sheba and Dedan. Pastor Carter, you're just trying to show off reading those words. No, I'm a teacher. I, I'm, I'm pronouncing them so that you can pronounce them. And it takes time to learn how to break these things into syllables. But praise God, my Bible already breaks them into syllables. So just pronounce the syllables. And as I said earlier, we would finish 11 chapters in this first assignment. And Chapter 11, the whole earth spoke one language, and that was dangerous because you had some people like Nimrod. They said, let's build a tower. Let's build it so high, we'll build it into heaven, and we take over heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, people are always trying to take over heaven. Satan, because Satan is their father, and Satan is still hurt and upset and crunched because he got kicked out of heaven and can never go back again. And so he tries to get mankind to overtake God. That is why Satan has created so many false religions, to try to pe get people to think they can override the scripture, override God's formula, override God, but it won't happen. It won't happen. And so this Tower of Babel was built, but it was destroyed. It was destroyed. And then... God uh, scattered the people throughout the whole world. <clears throat> and it was after the destruction of Babel, ladies and gentlemen. After the destruction of Babel, that God scattered the people throughout the world and the races of mankind were developed. The races, uh, the different races of mankind. This happened after the Noahic flood, the, no the flood of Noah's time and after the destruction of the Tower of Babel. And so the rest of Genesis chapter 11 is all about genealogy 
And I want to say in verse 15, And Salah lived after he begat Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and 30 years and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years. Eber, the, the, the man named Eber, he's the one where um, the Hebrews took their national uh, uh uh, national identification from Hebrews, Eber. Eber is the, actually the father of the Hebrews. Okay, so the next, the rest of chapter 11 is about Abram. Abram, his, his name was Abram. Later God breathed the Holy Spirit into him and changed his name to Abraham. Okay, Abram and Sarai, God breathed into Sarai, and she became Sarah, okay, Abraham is Sarah, Sarah, okay, and you see the journey of Abraham from a place called Ur of the Chaldees, which was a place up in Babylon, Abraham, Abraham came out of Babylon, ladies and gentlemen, seeking the promised land, and um, that ends chapter 11, and that ends our uh, presentation for the first week of Through the Bible, uh, this great journey, this international Bible study. I want to thank you for those who are live and those who are uh, are listening by the recording. We're going to work our, th our way through this Bible. It's going to be an exciting journey. Uh, and uh, yes, 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 I do get fired up teaching the Word of God, and I hope you get fired up, and I hope you'll be a fired up teacher of the Word. And I hope you'll be bold and, and will lead people to receive Jesus as Lord because this whole Bible is all about God providing a Savior and a Lord to rescue sinful man from man's sinful estate. And there's only one name under heaven by which we can be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. Okay, so I took five minutes more than what I promised I would. I owe you all five minutes. Okay, charge it to my head and not to my heart. Praise God. Father God, we just thank you for this presentation thus far. And now, Father, we ask that you guide us in the question and answer period. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, uh, Jackie Carter has the chat window, so she's going to lead off with any questions that she, she um, thinks that we ought to take first. And then we're going to open our phones up for Q&A. Everyone was listening as intently as I was, and I'm sure they were jotting down their questions, so there are none in the chat room. Um, so we're open for questions from the participants live. That means you have to unmute people. <laughs> hey, Dr. Carter. It's Andrew. Hi, Andrew. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. You did a great job. This is uh, going to be really fun. I can't wait. Oh, praise um, the Lord. Praise the Lord. So glad to have kinda, you as a student. <laughs> I was kind of curious. Where do you think the Garden of Eden actually was? The Garden of Eden, where uh, if you look on the map... And I don't have a map in front of me, but those four rivers, those four rivers converged, okay? And the Garden of Eden was in a place called Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, actually, uh, I think it's south of Babylon. Mm, that's interesting. But you know what? I'll, I'll probably do this later. I'll, I'll Google <laughs> hey, Andrew, Google. That's, that's exactly was what I was going to do. <laughs> okay. Mesopotamia, M E S O P O T A M I A. And uh, from those four rivers that are in, I think, Genesis 2 or 3, where those four rivers flowed and where they met, that was the Garden of Eden. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, Andrew. Blessings to you and Cheryl. And yep, Andrea. Too. I'm trying to get Cheryl to ask a question. She's too scared. <laughs> well, ask her. Ask, ask her for her. <laughs> you got any questions, Cheryl? Okay, she said she doesn't have any. Okay, thanks, Cheryl. 
<laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Just unmute your phone. Yes. Uh, good evening, Pastor Carter. And good evening. Hi, Jackie. This is Jackie Fisher. Hey, Jackie. Jackie. Yes, I have a question on Chapter 4. Okay, let me give you a little bit more volume. And verse 26. 426. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. You want to ask the question or you want me to read the scripture? Um, can you make that clear for me when they talked about um, there was born Eno, then oh. men began to call upon the name of the Lord? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's go back to 25 and 26 of chapter 4, Jackie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, she said, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, or Enosh, or Enoch. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Jackie, this means that this was the point where mankind began to have public worship of the Lord. Okay? They began to worship the Lord as 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 we worship God uh, communally and, and, and as we worship him openly. Um, mankind began as now there were others who worshiped God before that time, but it's at this time that people began to come out and begin to worship God as a community, as a for example, as a church, even though there were not churches then, families began to worship God then families would get together and then they would they would have start have public times when they would get together and worship God. Does this answer your question? Yes, it does. I wasn't quite sure, and I just wanted to ask you to get your your thoughts on that. Okay, okay. Also here, you have Enos, and you also his name can be pronounced Enosh or Enoch. Enoch was the one who, look, man, he did not die. He was one of two men, men in scriptures, Jackie. He didn't die. The Bible says Enoch just walked with God, and he was not. Isn't that a wonderful way to get into heaven, just walk? It is awesome. And then you have Elijah. Elijah did not die. He was walking with Elisha. And a fiery chariot came and lifted up Elijah and took him into heaven. So these are powerful men. By the way, we're looking at a time... Um, much different time zone from Enoch and Elijah. But we're looking at during the time of Enoch and Adam and Seth, these men lived 900 and some years, Jackie. So, so Jackie, my wife Jackie Carter and I were talking the other day about how much reproduction can take place in 900 and some years. You can fill a planet with people in 900 and some years. We won't stay on that thought, but it happened, okay? Well, thanks. All right. Thanks, Jackie Fisher. Dry Ridge, Kentucky, in the house. Anybody else have any questions? Zisla, come on in. Hi, Pastor Carter. Hi, Zisla. Uh, Midlothian, yeah, Texas, in the house. Yes. <laughs> no, great class as always. So it's, and um, you, you covered everything, so it's really good. Praise God, praise God. What question can we answer for you? Well, no. Um, well, you know, one thing that I that I heard of, which which may go along to to go along with, um, <clears throat> you know, with with, uh, with Adam, you know, the way that he has 
you know, that one rib was taken from him. And mm-hmm. one thing that, that I heard of before was that in Stanford, you know, Stanford is this university, and that they found out that there's one bone in the human body that can just reproduce itself. You know, that if it's, ta- if it's removed from the body, and that it can just come back. You know, that the body just creates it on its own. And, and it's, uh, it happens to be a rib. Oh, really? And so it's like, yeah. Really? And, so, and so that's where it's like, woo, you know, it goes along where, you know, the, the rib was removed from Adam, but then that particular rib must have come back, you know. And so mm. that's, that's like, praise God, you know, so, so that God did not leave him without the bone. The, the extra bone came back. Or the, or that's what I'm, I'm believing, you know, from, from, what, from what the study was. Praise God, praise God. Hey, sister, you know, my wife Jackie and I were talking the other day, and she asked me, do men have one less rib than women? Hmm. What okay. And, uh, Any, oh, anybody I mean, anybody okay. have an answer to that? Because I never have sought that question. Andrew, have you heard that? I'm on Google right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Google for me when you finish that. Do men have oh. one less rib than women? Okay, and and and, yeah, and isn't there like t- twelve ribs on on either side? Or I thought there was something in the Book of Revelation of <sighs> like the way that the body is um, is created, yeah. or, or that uh, it talks about like twenty four people or, or something around around God. We all like, have. Excuse me, we all have the same number of ribs. Now, what is fantastic about the human body is the ribs are attached. If you look at a skeleton, you see that the ribs are attached to um, what we call the sternum. But then there's a pair that don't seem to be attached to anything, and we call them in the medical community floating ribs. But everyone has the same amount of ribs, male or female. If you look at a skeleton, not knowing if it's male or female, until you do some testing, they all have the same number of ribs, male and female. This is Dr. Jean Branton, ladies and gentlemen, Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, Dr. Jean is is, uh, one of our teaching assistants, and uh, you'll be hearing more from her. She's also Dr. Jean as a nurse, and she she knows her medical stuff. as well as her Bible. Thanks, Dr. Gene. Praise God. So, Gene, so Adam had one less rib. Then Not anymore. Eve. <laughs> but, then, but then Seth probably had all his ribs, right? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. But that's a, that's a good question that we can all ask the Lord when we get to heaven. How did you do that? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. Praise God. Uh, any questions, Lisa Johnson in in Coastal Pennsylvania? You have any questions, Lisa? Pastor Lisa Johnson. Uh, no, I don't. I'm, I was just getting tickled. That's all. <laughs> okay, okay. God bless you. Hey, give my love to Pastor Larry. Okay. I sure will. Uh, Alisa, up in uh, New Hampshire. I'm actually Massachusetts. Any questions, Alisa? Did she ever get her sound thing straightened out? Hello? Hey, Elisa. Hi. How are you doing? uh, We were very good. We were very excited. We were both listening, Mark and I. Any questions, Elisa? Um, No, we had the same question about the ribs, and we were very interested in the answer. But now that I'm talking, I do have a question. Okay. Now, why are there only 66 books in the Bible and not, like, 70 or um, more? Great question, Alisa. Great question. She asked everybody, uh, Alisa asked, why are there only 66 books in the Bible rather than 70 or more? But when you look at the Catholic Bible, you'll see many more than what we have in the Protestant Bible. When you look at the Greek Bible, um, Alisa, you'll find many, many more than what we have 
in our Bible. We're gonna we're gonna take a we're gonna have a a, um, a lesson. It'll be called Who Wrote the Bible, and um, we're gonna look at the books of the Bible. We're gonna look at uh, a certain category of books, Alisa and class. Books called the apocryphal books and the books called the pseudepigrapha, long words, apocrypha, apocrypha, and pseudepigrapha. We're going to look at books that are in the Catholic Bible and in the Greek Bible but are not in the uh, Protestant Bible, and I will give you the answer why at that time, Elisa, okay? Yes. Elisa? Yes. And it's, it all contingents on the fact that the books that were selected, there were actually, to answer your question, there were hundreds of books written, hundreds of books written in the Old Testament time and the New Testament time, hundreds of books written that people claimed to be uh, uh, inspired by God, holy. And then so God, uh, God had to call in, in the Old Testament time a council of, of, of the uh, uh, Jewish elders, a council, and in uh, I think around in the 200s BC, a council of uh, rabbis had to choose. They select selected under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Out of the hundreds of books that existed, they selected the 39 that are now what we call the Old Testament books. And in 327 A.D. At the Council of Nicaea, 325 or 327 A.D., uh, the Holy Spirit called the Council of the Bishops of the, uh, of, of the Church, and they chose from hundreds of writings and selected the 29, 27 books that make up the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So the answer, we have 66 books in our Bible, but these books... There, there's a plethora. That's a big word I use every now and then. It's a, it's a, uh, a motley number of books out there that claim to be scriptural, claim mm -hmm. to be uh, uh, um, uh, um, holy. But God had to call councils, and these councils prayed, and they fasted and prayed and sought the Lord, and the Lord revealed to them what books are holy, what books are not, because there are a whole lot of false books, phony books, fake news. Fake news is no big thing. The word pseudepigrapha means fake news or false books. And so we'll get to that in one of our studies as we continue on. Thanks, Elisa. Thank you. Hey, thank Anyone you, else? Pastor Carter. Yes? That's good. I'm sorry. No, that's not just saying thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Oh, praise God, praise God. I, I enjoy, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I'm, I'm so glad uh, <clears throat> to be able to share this. Um, I think, personally, I think this is going to be a, an exciting venture, but I want to hear from you all. Uh, what do you think this uh, venture is going to do for you? Yeah, Anybody thank want you. To share? It's going to make us more aware. And make us more humble. Praise wow. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else want to share? Okay, okay. Let me just repeat that um, as we go through this journey, there will be people who will be studying because they want just to study, to know and, and know more Bible. And I praise God for you. Mm -hmm. Then there will be others who want to study to earn a certificate. At the end of this journey, it's about a two, uh, somewhere between a year and a half and two years, you'll be able to get a certificate. Then there are students who are, in the, who are enrolled in the Back to Basic School of Ministry that you can take this course, these courses as semester courses and earn three credits per course. I'd like to encourage you to go to our website to get an overview of all this, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. 
or contact me and I'll, I'll be glad to go over this with you, work out a plan for you to study and earn your degree. Um, we've got several people here who are uh, working on their degrees. And as I said earlier, the school is fully accredited. So I just praise God. I thank God. I thank God for what he's doing. I want to thank you for coming on tonight and for uh, being a blessing to me and, and to one another. And I want to mention that your homework for next week is to read Genesis chapters 12 through 21. Try to read all of those chapters, 12 through 21, and then I will send out in an email tomorrow and also put on Facebook your questions that I would like for you to answer. Those of you who are studying for, <clears throat> pardon me, those of you who are studying for a certificate or degree, you will receive weekly, on a weekly basis, a reading assignment plus a question assignment. And then answer the questions, send them back into me as an email attachment or a word attachment, and then I can grade them and give you your credit <coughs> for your accomplishments. If you're a student and you're monitoring, <coughs> pardon me, and you want to be a part of the school, contact me. We work that out. If you're saying, well, I don't have the finances, <clears throat> we'll work that out also. This is not, we're not in this to make money. We're in this so that you can grow in the Lord. Okay. Is Elder Bill Ransom still on with us tonight? <clears throat> okay. I don't see him. Okay, anyone else? Um, Brian Whitaker, how did this class help you tonight? Well, my, my overall goal besides the school is to gain knowledge, to be able to, to share with people, um, to, to win souls that uh, the knowledge, knowledge I don't have right now maybe that I can use as a good witnessing tool or as like to be able to explain to somebody, you know, certain things where you know, like where did Adam come from or where do we come from, things like that. Praise God, praise God. Well, I believe you're going to get that and much more, Brian. And I appreciate you very much. I see Bill, I see Bill Ransom is back. I'm here, Leroy. Hey, Bill, how you doing, man? I'm fine. How are you this evening? Fine, fine. Bill Ransom and I go back a lot of years, ladies and gentlemen. He's one of my best friends from we went to high school together. And and, and I want to say <clears throat> I admired you so much in junior high school, middle school, because we are in middle school, and you were playing on the high school football team, man. You set the pace for all of us. That was just some of God's work, that's all. Yep, 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 yep. So uh, years have passed, and he and I went to college together. <clears throat> so glad to see you. And I hope this journey will be a blessing to you and help you and encourage you in your work as you continue to share the Word of God with many people. Um, congratulations. Keep on letting the Lord use you. Yes, indeed. And All you right. also. Okay. Now, would you close us out in prayer, please, my brother? Yes, I will. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us this evening to share with Pastor Carter. We thank you for opening our hearts and minds to your word. Let it penetrate in our hearts and let us tomorrow go out and share your word and do your honor and give glory to your name. In your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Bill. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. God bless you. And looking forward to seeing you next week at the same time. By the way... If you know people who are sick and shut in and can't get, up, get out to church or if you uh, don't have a church home and you want to continue fellowshipping with the Lord, we invite you to use the same connection on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock and join us on the online church where the Lord is uh, having a stand in the gap for those who cannot go to church or have no church to go to and the word is being preached powerfully on Sunday morning. God bless you. We love you all. Hey, thank you, Jackie Carter, for helping us tonight. God bless each and every one of you. Good night.